This Holy is grumpy. Cow. <laughs> yeah. Now, can you give me a minute? <laughs> Do you no, some, seriously, can you give me a minute? Do you want some tissues? I'll, yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> Different in person, isn't it? Hell yeah. I, I, I've never loved and hated somebody so much in my life. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that that back window is just like a picture of the engines. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. Yeah. It's quite different, isn't it? Like you, but you can see why this would have been so much better than the original Quattro, wouldn't you? Mm. Oh, yeah, massively. <laughs> like with the, the layout of the I, drive line and I the- I can't believe they didn't go through and keep it yeah. going. It's just, yeah. it's, it seems like a, yeah. a waste. This is going to be awesome. I, yeah. Awesome. I, I, yeah. There's not many cars I get lost for words on, but I'm, um, yeah. Yeah, it's good, isn't You're it? You're definitely going to have to give me a minute. And definitely not. <laughs> no, <it's> not <laughs> Welcome to another video of the Group S RS001 build. We're here with Ben. Ben's freshly shaven, as you can see. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, he's from TurboSmart, and he's bought a shopping cart full of goodies for me. So do you want to go through some of the, what we've got? Let's do it. Yeah. So uh, new to this year, is um, turbos. So TurboSmart, uh, for me, you know, it's all we use on all of our race cars because it just works. It's great value for money and, you know, it's nice and reliable and yeah, we love the little range. And there's so many different little options that you can get so you can customize your, your range. And like what we've got here is mainly like a, a run of the mill, like motorsport sort of package, really. We're not, they also do like different um, wastegates, different blow off valves in different um, colors, different shapes, um, sleepers or compact range. So you've got different space available, isn't it? You know, cause, cause not every application is the same, is it? Yeah, no, yeah. definitely. Yeah, we do, we do everything from the fast road up to the, the full fabrication build like yourself. Mm, 100%. Um, so yeah, everything to tick the, the guy with his road car that wants a bit more performance or, um, a bit more noise maybe, uh, yeah, up to full send. So what made TurboSmart get into turbos? Uh, so the, the company is 25 years old, 26 years old this year, um, formed by uh, Nick Cooper in, yep. in Australia, uh, out of passion and realizing that, um, or his love for racing, realizing there was a, a mm. niche in the market. Uh, he created a few parts in, uh, in the, the family's farm, in, the, in, mm. in his workshop and then realized it was a business. So it, mm. it's evolved from being something that he could see a bit of a niche for that uh, he could see. Um, Sorry. Oh, good. Busy at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> so that, uh, uh, yeah, something he just did as a passion to, to turn into Turbo Smart as we are now with um, offices globally, with uh, offices in the UK, with, in Poland, in the USA, and obviously still Australia. Mm. Um, and yeah, pushing the... the so the is there a, some of the early... Ter is, is there an office with some of the first wastegates and... There is. I'll send you some pictures. Cause yeah, there's, there's we need a, to include that. We early, need to include that on the, the Yeah, the an video. early blow off valve, um, an early wastegate, um, and how things have evolved is, yeah. is crazy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Only blow files are very simple. Yeah. And yeah. They, in theory, they still are now. Yeah. Fundamentally, yeah. they're the same. But the flow characteristics and the, yeah. their uh, reliability is different. Wastegates used to be very simple, square. Yeah. yeah. Didn't really look at flow, they were just yeah. fixing a problem. Yeah. And as everything else got more efficient, as engines have got more efficient and mm. people want more power, we've had to really look at the flow characteristics of, of our products and same as everyone in the industry. Mm. We're, we're always pushed by our competition. Um, the more they grow, the more they release, the more 100%. we grow, the more we release, we, we love it. Uh, and we're in an industry with some really great, passionate companies. So yeah, um, yeah, it's good to keep pushing each other. Yeah, and to be honest, that's one of the best things about you guys as well, is like every year, not one thing comes out new. There's lots of things come out new. Oh, I think yeah. at SEMA you had like, was it nine or so brand new? And not, not yeah. just like a different color wastegate. Mm -hmm. It was like a turbo. It was, 
you know, oh, yeah, we, we never go e-gate half so send. Was, you know. the, the, the Aussie term full send is, is yeah. every single day of the week. Yeah, um, yeah SEMA just gone. We released uh, pneumatic straight gate, uh, vacuum straight gate, um, a 76 mil straight, a 40 mil. We re released a boost gate. We released mm. uh, electronic race port. We released uh, oceans of stuff. And then a turbocharger range, mm. which... Mm. Yeah, it's obviously that, that was just mm. a, oh, and we've also got this. Um, yeah, yeah. And that's that, for us, that's what yeah. rocked everyone at SEMA. They used to us releasing a lot of stuff. Yeah. Um, but the turbo has, has been in the background for a good while. Um, so, yeah. what's, I mean, we, the, the application that we've got, we were on a couple of different power levels, you see. Mm -hmm. So, we're actually going to change like a bit of a frame of the turbo. So, mm -hmm. so we're going to have a couple of different turbos for this application. We want one that's probably um, 650 horsepower, mm -hmm. and then we want to go up to a thousand with the the other one. And so, um, <clears throat> we've chosen um, two different versions of it. Mm -hmm. And the joy is, is because it's just bolt on and the flanges are like for like, we could just swap it over. So it's not a massive. Yeah. Not yeah. a massive hurdle. And I think something unique to your um, turbochargers as well is that now you actually get them with all the clamps, all the flanges, all the bits and pieces. Yeah. So, you know, there's kind of no excuses for when you get one and fit it, you know, because that was always, it's a bit like whenever anybody builds a race engine, everyone just looks online, looks at the connecting rod prices mm -hmm. and that's it. And then they, then they don't, look at, oh, you gotta buy connecting rod bolts, mm -hmm. blah, blah. And, yeah. and all the add-ons like tend to like cost you a bit more money, don't they? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we, we've all been there. We've all bought parts of turbochargers, for, for example. We've been looking at the industry for a good while. Yeah. We know the frustrations that people have of, yeah, you buy, you need a, a gasket or you need mm -hmm. a, yeah, a, a flange or whatever you need as a spare. And it's mm -hmm. an addition to it, just holds up the project. Mm -hmm. So we thought we're gonna treat it like one of our wastegates, one of our external wastegates, supply everything you need to fabricate mm -hmm. it, Everything you need to parts of the clamps, the waste kit's got springs, they've got everything that you'd need to adapt it to suit your mm. vehicle. Uh, yeah, once you bought it, you've, you've peace of mind, you've got everything mm. there in front of you. Yeah. Uh, yeah, can we know how annoying that can be? Yeah, 100%, 100%. And, and that, that is, you know, like um, Ben mentioned with the waste gates, you've got a series of different springs that come spare with it. You know, you you also spec it up with what spring you've got in it. Mm -hmm. And then you've got a range of ones that you could fine tune it with. And then, and, and that's something that we're gonna use a lot with this. And um, normally as a guide, you tend to try to go mechanically round about sort of 60% of your total boost that you wanna to try to achieve really. Well, that's what I sort of normally aim for anyway. And so we've got this set to like a static pressure of um, uh, 1.2 bar. And then we could then use the electronic valve to then step up different power levels. And really the minimum pressure that you want to achieve is, you know, like if you can get that quite low, that's quite a good thing. And then with the boost control valve, the four port, that just allows, you could then put in the ECU and mapping, like a little bit of throttle progression um, mm -hmm. on the boost control strategy. And also, so it drives a little bit more like a normal aspirator car, isn't mm -hmm. it? And also you don't want it too high because y your drive line or your, your traction that you get in the lower gears might be too much for it. So mm -hmm. yeah. that's why, you know, like having these springs available when you first get the wastegate is quite a good thing. So yeah. you can, you could then, you know, try out, ah, oh, it's all right, it might take 1.3 bar on the start line, mm -hmm. might take, you know, maybe more. So, you know, everyone wants to piss about and fiddle with things. So I think, you know, having the parts available is definitely the way forward. Mm -hmm. And these little springs aren't cheap. I don't know if you've ever <laughs> tried to buy some spare and separate, are they? They're, no. But they're not, no. they're not your average spring from, no, and somewhere are they? They're not. They're so. designed for spec, and they're they're only designed for the wastegate it's it's with. Um, it's not like we've just gone to a supplier and said we need a spring this tall. Yeah. That's spec to be uh, spec for that forty five mil gate, based on a back pressure that, yeah, based on the engine back pressure that we yeah. theoretically included. Yeah. Uh, to say that that is a seven psi spring, that's a five psi, that's a three psi, yeah. and there's a fourteen installed. It's yeah, it says 
the, the, the spring that's there is, is designed for that. Um, and you mentioned just about the, the spring pressure and the spring rate. That's a common question we get, mm. that um, somebody's got a 14 PSI wastegate, but they only want 7 PSI of, of uh, boost. Can they manipulate mm. it down? And that's the one thing you can't do. So you can manipulate up, you can go at 14 to 21, Correct. you can never yeah. go 14 to 7. Yeah. And um, yeah, you can, you can never weaken the spring. Um, yeah, yeah. That, that's quite a common one. So we always say, like you said, spring it less than you need and yeah. then manipulate yeah, it. Yeah, that's right, that's right. Yeah, and I mean, it should be the law anyway. You should always run more boost pressure than a tire pressure anyway, isn't it? So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely, <laughs> definitely. But yeah. that, that's another thing that we sort of use as well on this application is, is we, we tend to use the four port uh, boost control valve as well. And, and the four port, um, it's special to your range, isn't mm -hmm. it? It's, yes, yes. It's not just a standard Mac valve that you could buy off um, eBay. No, is so, it, it, so it is uh, well, it, it is designed by Mac, so it is a Mac valve in itself, but the yeah. specification of it, yeah. we've designed it to uh, talk with our eBoost 2. So the frequency is specially designed to talk with our eBoost 2. Yeah. So it's a slightly different spec than Mac valve you buy off the shelf. Uh, I know there's a few manufacturers do similar things to suit yeah. their products, but we find that that's best suited for our e-boost too, and then worked yeah. with a lot of, uh, worked for a lot of tuners to, yeah. to do what they need to do as well. Yeah, and and we, I had it once with your, um, we had a position sensor in one of the wastegates once, and with, with a, it was a um, 45 mil gate, and we had the boost control valve on it as well. Mm -hmm. And I remember um, watching the diaphragm in a wastegate go, and then I sp spread it out in the software, mm -hmm. and it was exactly 17 hertz okay. frequency, you know, yeah. like yeah. the pulsing of the valve time-wise, and it lined up with each little peak. <laughs> yeah, and, awesome. um, and the boost control was mint. That was in the intake manifold. But the poor little wastegate was like getting <laughs> shaken around, really. Yeah. And, and literally, we changed the frequency to, I think, 20, 25 or something like that hertz. And it stopped the wastegate from, like, mm -hmm. you know, sort of um, uh, playing around. We can't swear on this channel. So, because okay. we, we've actually, we've, the analytics, we haven't actually got any women viewers. Oh. But we still can't swear because Axel's mum. Oh, okay. Yeah. She's, she's the only one. She's, she's the only one, and she's yeah. our biggest fan. Yeah. If I do swear to so, Australia, my apologies, Axel's mum. Yes, <laughs> we're, we're not allowed to swear because of Axel's mum. Yeah. Right? So, so yeah, anyhow, the, 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 the <laughs> around, Axel, <laughs> Axel bleep that out, of the valve was gone, and, um, and, and, and that was by just changing the frequency. Mm. And, and these are all little bits that you need to be looking for when you try fine tuning or your your boost control system and mm -hmm. stuff like that yeah. really and yeah. with all this stuff it just seems to respond to it really mm -hmm. and another thing as well like we um when i sat down with you like we sort of went through like turbo smart got a, quite a good online calculator for working out what yeah. is the best for your application mm -hmm. so it kind of makes life easy for you. You can kind of put in how much power you've got, what your engine size is, a lot of details of the stuff, and then it'll spit out, you need this this wastegate, this regulator, blah, 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 blah yeah. and then away you go. Yeah. And, and there's, it just there's two sides to that as well. So there's the, the first dashboard you get to, which gives yeah. you the breakdown, and there's another tab which gives you more data. You can actually adjust based on any any parameters you want it to yeah. change, yeah. and it will slightly adjust your, your requirements. but. Um, for 99% of people, that gives you gaps yeah. you need. Yeah, 100%. Um, we regularly 100%. see incorrect expect yeah. gates or, yeah. or FPRs or, um, yeah. 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 It, it's, it just makes things easy. Yeah, and, and to be honest, when you're, when you're tuning and, and when you're trying to get a car to run right, everything's got to be the same, mm -hmm. the same time. And then the next time it's got to be the same as well. So if if something like your fuel pressure regulator or whatever is maybe marginal or, or not up to the task or not regulating the fuel pressure correctly, mm. then everything's changing all the time. Yeah. And, yeah. You know, we don't like change. No, we not like, at all. <laughs> we no. like consistency. Yes, so, definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Well, the so, FPR, we, we've, we're slightly different to others in the industry with our FPR. So, um, one thing you will notice on the FPR when you when you prime the pumps, 
if you don't turn the engine on, it will drain fuel. Yeah. It's not designed to hold fuel pressure. Yeah. We've done that because when we explored all the FPRs in, in the industry, uh, they were very good yeah. at what they did. Yeah. But that one-to-one -one boost to fuel pressure ratio mm. was, was not where we'd want it to be. Yeah. We wanted it to be direct one-to-one, -one, yeah. one PSI to yeah. one, but just, yeah, yeah. As, as close to one-to-one -one as it can be. And that's genuinely only one-to-one -one in the market. Yeah. The only downside is when, yeah, if somebody's come off another FPR, they see it drain and think it's faulty. Yeah. Um, but just say prime and then start, and yeah. you won't have an issue. Yeah, which, uh, which to be honest, most systems nowadays do that, don't yes. they? They prime yeah. and, you know. And this, obviously, this is the new FPR range. This is the, an FPR 8, which um, we've changed our, our product names recently uh, over the past couple of years. So it used to be called FPR Comp, uh, no, FPR 800, 1200. That's right, yeah. Um, yeah. Based on the horsepower's worth of fuel, it could float. Yeah. The one thing that did was confuse people. If somebody's got a Dash Six fuel line, but they've only got 800 horse, mm. they wouldn't mm. want a, a one eighth MPT FPR. Yeah. They'd, they'd need a 1200 yeah. just to make things easier. Yeah. So we've changed it now to FPR Compact, which is one eighth MPT FPR Six Dash Six FPR Eight Ten Twelve, based on the fittings themselves, just to cut out all that yeah. confusion. Yeah, 100%. Um, which yeah, makes things a hell of a lot easier. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And then we've got a sexy little bracket to go with it as well. I just want it for the bracket. Yeah, yeah. It's all about the bracket. It's, all, it's the bracket. That's been designed because yeah, the guys in ours, yeah. when they were saying, historically we've always supplied a little bracket, which is fine. It, it, it yeah. worked, it did the yeah. job. But then saying, if it was for our own vehicle, what would we do? Yeah. And then someone said, why don't we do a billet bracket? Yeah. And yeah, we've got one for that and for the LPR. So it's, yeah, they're, they're nice. Yeah. They're nice. It just adds a little bit more Pizzazz to you. Yeah, by, 100%. Yeah. If that's the right word to use. Yeah, there's, yeah. there's lots of that here. <laughs> yeah. As, you, as you'll see by his reaction when he first seen the car. So, and, yeah. 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 What Dave doesn't know is I'm taking it home. I'm yeah. Like, <laughs> no, I know not. when you're on holiday. Yeah, I'm going to come and babysit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, nah, thanks for that. And, um, yeah, we're going to look forward to bolting a lot of these parts on and then um, go from there. So we're going to use going to use a lot of the silicon for the air filtration and the intake pipe system on it. We've got some of these sexy little Murray clamps. You call them Murray clamps? Yep, yep. constant tension. So, yep. um, constant tension, they're all, like, nice, and they, they're spring-loaded, so they, they'll always hold your pipes in place. Um, these are really good. And then, um, yeah, we've got your wastegates, we've got blower valves and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Yeah. Now, the, the will this blower part. valve make noise? That's the biggest question. Uh, yes, it will. Yeah. What, depends what, it depends what, no, how, what how, noises how, does it make? Can you, not can a you, chance. Not a chance. <laughs> do it, do it. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, if you're going full send, of course it'll make noise. Yeah. If, you, if, you're, if you're driving like my nan, then no. It probably won't make noise. It probably won't make noise. No. no. Won't. Not when I'm driving uh, it anyway. So. <laughs> yeah, wouldn't, yeah. No. This isn't a car that's going to be driven half fast, is it? So no. Full no, sound. We're going to yeah. try. Yeah. Mm. So. Yeah. Yeah, so but, obviously you've gone for the full vent atmosphere race port, which is um, one of our staple products, one of our most popular products globally, uh, as used uh, on many big builds across mm. America and Europe. Uh, two and a half thousand horsepower capable. Mm. It's, yeah. It does. A lot of air. Yeah. There's a, a lot, lot of air, air a lot of the job. And uh, we we actually had that on um, Ray, my Pikes Peak car. We mm -hmm. um, I tried to muck around with that, and um, to to sort of make make a bit of noise when you lift off because mm -hmm. historic with an Audi, they've mm -hmm. got like a two two two. I'll mm -hmm. make the noise because okay. he can't yep. make the noise. Insert they make noise a <laughs> yeah insert noise here, and then. Um, and we tried to do that by strengthening up the spring in the, the bits mm. and pieces. And of course, I put it all back together. And of course, when you've got all the springs in the whole catalogue trying to ram them into a thing or whatever, I didn't put it back together right and, and mm. leaked. So yeah, we, <laughs> we went back to square one again and put it back to normal. But, yeah. but what, I mean, that noise, where's it come from? The noise when you hear the, the so, famous Audi lift yeah. off. So, uh, in, in, you know, the, as in going back to fundamentals, yeah, yeah. Your, your, obviously your turbo's creating boost yeah, as you're on yeah. throttle. Uh, when you come off the throttle, you close your throttle plate, yeah. that air's got to go somewhere. Um, yeah, hence the blower valves, it, it vents it into atmosphere to save it going back through the turbocharger. Yeah, 100%. Uh, keeping everything efficient. Uh, 
Yeah. Um, yeah, the Audi noise is special. Uh, yeah, there's, there's yeah. something magical about that. And they didn't care about compressor storage. No, much. they didn't. So they probably never had one of those, no. did they? No. So that that's something why you hear that iconic noise is the noise that you heard was this mm -hmm. making the air go supersonic past the blades, mm -hmm. yeah. wasn't it? Yeah. So because it, it's got nowhere to go, it's got to go somewhere, and it has to come back out mm -hmm. where it's been trying to push in, and then that's when you hear the. Dugu, dugu, dugu. noise isn't it <laughs> insert noise here. so insert yeah. noise here so yeah. yeah so we'll i'm not sure if we'll have that with our no, combo you, yeah you'll have more of a um uh like a venting uh, yeah, ah, yeah. Without, without making the noise you'll yeah. have more more of a uh i say a subtle noise than that but def yeah definitely vent up to a noise yeah. but more of a whoosh than a yeah 100 um, percent and and i think that's why I have to stick around to like and subscribe to make sure you mm -hmm. hear what noise comes out of it, really. So, mm -hmm. yeah. So yeah. So thanks yeah, for coming think down. She's special to look at. She's going to be special to hear. Oh yeah, yeah, I cannot wait because I've got two exhaust systems for it as well as two turbos. So I've got one that's full open, mm -hmm. and then I've got one that's got a you know, can you bleep this a <laughs> silencer as well? <laughs> <laughs> You'll have to. Yeah. Sorry, Axel's mum. <laughs> um, so we've got a silencer that we're going to have to fit to the car for UK tracks and yeah. stuff like that, really. Yeah. So yeah, that all. Yeah. EU that. green. Yeah. 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 Mm. And away we go, really. So yeah, thanks for coming down, Ben. No, pleasure. And, um, if you want to stick around, me. we could start fitting some bits if you want. So. Yeah. Beer, beer yeah. first or beer yeah. afterwards or beer during? And... Both. Yeah, let's do it. I oh, know you're not allowed to drink on YouTube, are you? We're not drinking on YouTube, we're drinking after YouTube. Okay, yeah. yeah. Right. It's like the after so, party. Yeah, we can, yeah, we can blur those bits out. So, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. But, um, a kind of Coca-Cola Pepsi, obviously. Yes. Yeah. Uh, not alcohol free beer. Yes. Heineken Zero. Yes. Give we me promote zero. all. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, awesome. Mm, open the window up of the rear group S <laughs> video here. So, we are just discussing then, on this we've got a turbo speed sensor uh, provision, which we're going to add to the vehicle. And, and that should help us because one of the key things is if you're going to drive a car with altitude or up altitude, as in like high up in the, the, the thing, that speed is going to be very, very different from when you're at sea level, really. And one of the things that we can also help to work out as well which we haven't got on those um, wastegates and blow-off valves, is you also do a, a, a position sensor. We do, yes. For the wastegate, so. And, and for the race port. And well. for the race port, mm -hmm. for the blow-off valve as well. So, so they can be all um, data log channels then, mm -hmm. and then we could just work out how much the wastegate's working and mm -hmm. stuff like that. And to be honest, the, the wastegate one is a really interesting channel to log mm -hmm. because you, you kind of know when you're exhausting off excess boost mm -hmm. or all the air is actually going through the turbocharger. Yes. And you can kind of work out how big it is and, and where it sort of meets in the RPM range and stuff. So that will be a good channel to... Definitely. We always say data's king. So the more data you have, the more data you can use and yeah, the more you can make it as efficient as you can. So. 100%. Yeah. And to be honest, it's just more wiring as well, isn't it? Mm. So yeah, well, we thanks, know you thanks for that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes. I'm Building up to the loom on this. That's <laughs> got to come soon, apparently. So, yeah, I know a guy if you need some wiring done. Do you? Yeah. I might get his he number lives off you. Yeah. somewhere Does else. he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Got a dog I heard he's really hard to get hold of. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think he's vegan or something. Yeah. <laughs> Bleep that bit. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that's cool. Do you want to? Uh, where's, where's your nut gun? It's in my pocket. Well, I'm not getting your nuts out of your pocket, Come on, Dave. It's in my pocket. Um, that's, that's, this, this. Come on. Personal this space. Feels, Personal in, space. In this pocket? Yep. That's Are the one. you sure? Yep. Hands away. Hey. Dave, your nuts have fell out of your pocket, mate. There's, uh, there's no nuts in your pocket. There's no nuts in my pocket. Right. You know, there is a little hole in there, but. <laughs> there's no nut in that pocket. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was going to be a big surprise then. Oh, there you go. It's not allowed for YouTube. It's in there. <laughs> I just wanted a quick feel up, really. Exactly what I was expecting. Wouldn't expect any less, yeah. though. 
Definitely wasn't going in your trouser pocket. Look at that, mate. Teamwork. Teamwork makes the dream work. Just pinched up. That's it, the loop. And so, because everything's adjustable, we can just rotate it now, because you've got to get the alignment of the oil system um, straight up and down. Mm -hmm. Little bit of a kink, maybe. Yeah. Stop it. And I'll nip those up and stuff like that. Do you want to grab the gate? Yeah, certainly. This is the Motorsport one. So you see here, there's a, there's a bit of a spacing from the actual um, housing and the actual diaphragm. And there's a load of cooling fins to get away the heat from the actual um, exhaust housing here. And, and that basically just protects the diaphragm. So because stuff coming out of here is gonna be like a thousand degrees, um, it just protects everything there. And also you've got water cooling available as well. So um, one of the, one of my customers, he's got a, a Porsche and that's the packaging around that is like so compact and tight, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And the water cooling and the extra like venting there, basically just 100% reliability then. Yeah. And he, he was doing like a three, four hour endurance race and having to replace the diaphragms on these old wastegates. Mm -hmm. So ones this we won't is, talk about. Yeah, well, this is one of the uniques about Turbo Smart and how we test, uh, when we, why we say engineered to win. So we test at EGTs of 1300 degrees. Uh, without water cooling, we can, we can um, use a gate at uh, 1300 degrees for up to 45 minutes. With water cooling for 24 hours. Yeah, It just makes a huge difference. Yeah. That's 1300 EGT, so miles yes. beyond where cool, cars will we'll, we'll get to. But we, we yeah. like to test above and beyond. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. And definitely, definitely going to that next level. One thing, these have a little seat that goes in here. Mm. So you nearly forgot, didn't we? That's a rookie mistake, no, I've, that. I've got it on the flange. <laughs> so basically, you've got this little seat that is a serviceable item. So um, this needs to make sure that you fit, because so many times I've fitted this, and then you've got boost just leaking out. Yes, we'd usually say use a compressed gas or um, compress the valve down to compress that seat. That's it. So yeah, go for it. I don't have to get the nuts out of your pocket this time. Yeah, no. Uh, there you go, just punched up. Perfect. Perfect. Oh, a little bit more, is that good? Yeah, go a bit more. Yeah. yeah. Just keep it in place. Are you going to be running a screamer or are you going to be running the... No, it goes back through? in. It goes back in, to be fair. So I've got like a little flexible joint that sort of comes here and then it goes back into the okay. thing. So nice. um, it's just easier when you run a silencer at the back. Yes. Yeah. Because uh, yeah, for noise. For, yeah, a yeah. screamer's good for many things, but not for noise. Yeah, 100%. And you can actually change the orientation of these, can't you? You can. Yeah, so 360 degree rotatable. So if you look uh, underneath, there's a um, little collar underneath the uh, heat shield. Uh, there's two tabs, so one tab which secures it to the collar, one tab which secures it to the, um, the shield. And uh, yeah, release them and then you can, mm. yeah, you can rotate the Perfect. So I'll, I'll get the exhaust on and then I'll, uh, we, we try to have a bit of symmetry in my life with um, the way the planning of the car is. So I like to get that, you know, docked in a different position and yeah. then, and then you've got two sets of available um, inlets for, or, you know, boost mm -hmm. control pipe fittings. Yes. And then it's a matter of like, I can then, we could then just mount the boost control valve somewhere around here mm -hmm. and then do all the pipe work and stuff like that. Yeah. So, yeah, we did it for that exact reason. So obviously you, you're quite fortunate in the fact that there's nothing really obstructing the gate at the top. Yeah, this is, um, yeah, it's quite Yeah, we, we you work with quite a, a few builds which have uh, a lot more compact bay. So the idea of being able to move your boost reference away from any heat source yeah. is just yeah. ideal. I was saying your water cooling yeah. as well, so you can keep everything away. Yeah, um, yeah, it just helps. Yeah, and to be honest, sometimes you, you want to, uh, you know, the, the bottom wastegate pipe in the bottom there, then maybe the, the top one in the opposite side, mm -hmm. you know, just because of yeah. parts. You know, th this is probably one of the easiest installations, isn't it? With mm -hmm. space, you know, yeah, so. it's beautiful. Yeah. yeah, so no, yeah, this, would be, this would be good. On this. top of the, the bottom being able to rotate, obviously the cap can fit in any position as well. So you can fit that yeah. cap in any position. So it's say 360 plus another 360 on top. So if you needed the the, the bottom ports, yeah, here, you can have them, have the top cap at whatever position you want yes. to be as well. So yeah. just again, yeah. just a, Plenty a of bit adjustments. more thinking just to yeah. 
keep everything nice and simple away from heat sources. Yeah, and it, you get the tool with it as well. You do to, yeah, so that, yeah, to yeah, adjust it. So yeah, locking car um, tool. One thing as well, we're dry sump system on this vehicle, mm -hmm. and we're possibly going to have about up to seven bar oil pressure. Okay, is that going to be a problem with this? So turbochargers, in theory, like to see between 40 and 50 psi of mm -hmm. oil pressure, just so it doesn't leak past the seals, yeah. keeps it nice and consistent. Uh, ideally, we'd like to reduce it down to around okay, that. that's fine. Um, we can definitely help on that with an inline yeah. oil pressure regulator. Yeah, cool. That's simple in-out, no need for a return. Yeah. In theory, it's an, in, it's an inline filter with a, with a um, pressure regulator built in. It yeah, does come perfect. with a filter as well, so yeah. it gets all the nasties out. Uh, if you have any swarf in the oil, yeah. et cetera, et cetera. Um, we'll prevent that yeah, turbo perfect. from being destroyed. Yeah, we might get one of those as well, I think. So, because mm -hmm. we, what fittings does it come with as well? It's Dash 4. Perfect, because so that's what this is. Okay. So we've got Dash 4 here, and we've got Dash 4 here. Okay. And so we'll mm -hmm. just, we can, we can mount it somewhere um, mm -hmm. where it's not going to melt. So yeah. we'll figure <laughs> that out later. Yeah. So, but yeah, this should be perfect, really. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so they come with a nice little bracket as well, similar to the. Bracket for the FPR, so a nice billet bracket. It'd be worth it just for the bracket, wouldn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it comes with a three bolts, the yeah three bolt bracket that um, comes for the OPR. See a little bit smaller than this. This is done for the fuel pressure regulator. Um, but yeah, definitely uh, would look the would look the part. Perfect. Yeah, we'll we'll get one of those as well. I think because mm. you don't, you know, with the with the dry sump like standard, these engines only make. Um, like three bar of pressure, like sort of 45, 50 PSI. But because we've, but that was because the engine's that way in a standard mm -hmm. car and we're going that way. And so we've designed our own dry sump system and, and we could sometimes see up to like seven on bar really. So mm -hmm. you don't really want a Puff and Billy no. um, like steam train action, you know, yeah. sort of coming out the exhaust because everyone just thinks your car's broken <laughs> and it's not. Yeah. <laughs> it's just, just because you've, exceeded the limit of the turbo. Yeah, the only last so. thing you want to do is blow seals. So it's, yeah. 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 Massive thanks to Ben for coming down to see us today. We've got some really cool parts from for the turbo system and the boost control system and fuel system from them. So they're going to be a great help for this project because, you know, this stuff's first class and it deserves to be on every car really. And make sure you like and subscribe because we've got all the drive shafts for the vehicle now and we've got pretty much all the drive line um, parts to put the assembly together so next video we're going to cover a little bit of the plumbing and we're going to do some more stuff to hopefully avoid doing the wiring a, bit, a little bit longer so yeah make sure you like and subscribe and we'll see you soon